Kamala Harris's speech at the final night of the DNC convention last night made Reagan, Trump, Clinton, and Obama look like a half-drunk gaggle of third-rate carnival barkers. This might be the biggest political head fake in history. And I think Trump knows it. His lack of energy at his last two events is now palpable. Many people are noticing this. A couple videos ago, I made the allegation that I don't think he wants to be the nominee anymore. And right now, I don't think I can blame him, to be very honest. But in Arizona today, he said some things that many people missed. And I would like to cover this. And I'll be honest with you guys. This could be worse than what Reagan did to Carter. I know that's a big statement coming from as far behind as she was, but the change between the energy behind Biden and the energy behind her is night and day. It's battlefield of the mind. I know a lot of you are like Florida Maquis. My mind has been made up for a long time. I'm voting for Trump. I know. I agree. That group of people, nothing has changed. But even Mr. Trump knew that he couldn't win with just the MAGA base. Why do you think he keeps trying to talk about poor old Joe Biden? How many of you heard that today? Like, boy, what they did to Joe Biden, terrible. I almost feel bad for the guy. Wow. Why would he say something like that? You see, he's grasping for new groups of voters because he knows he can't win with just his base. Not enough people. There's just not enough people in the hardcore Trump group. But it's battlefield of the mind. If you'd like to join us, Florida Maquis Patreon channel, one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. You've got nothing to lose. Give it a shot. We're going to be putting up a brand new video over there next two days. And... It's going to contrast a couple of different things that we're going to kind of allude to today in this video. But of course, here on YouTube, we've got to keep things a little bit closer to the vest so it don't get taken down. First thing Mr. Trump talked about was this looming possible tomorrow. I guess it would be today. It's about two o'clock in the morning Eastern time right now. This looming possible dropout of the race of uh, RFK Jr., and him supporting Trump, endorsing Trump, all this kind of thing. When asked about this today at the border, how many of you caught this little snippet where Mr. Trump said, yeah, I would be honored to have his uh, support and his endorsement. Um, it's really hard. He's trying to do third party. It's, And here's what he said that really perked up my attention. It's not the way they really designed it. Things have been set, things are were set up to be a two-party system. He was referring to the Founding Fathers. Referring to our country being set up for a two-party system when that was never the case. Never the case. They would have absolutely balked at the idea. Go back and listen to it. It was the very first question he took after he got done talking. It was about RFK Jr. He truly believes that our country was set up to, to run on Republicans and Democrats. And how many of you remember the whole uh, snafu about him guarding the whole guarding the airfields thing, Independence Day? But it gets even better. You see, part of me almost wants to feel bad for the guy because he's got this need. He's got this need to feel loved and to feel adored and to feel appreciated. And now he's got to speak from behind bulletproof glass. You know what that's got to be doing to this guy's, guy's head? Be like, oh, you're so brave, so brave. A woman passed out and he walked out from behind the glass. See, I think that was kind of a need. But the one thing that Mr. Trump did in his little event down in this area of Arizona that really kind of, oh, how would uh, the Family Guy character have? You know what grinds my gears? You know what really grinds my gears? Is when people try to make their own grief 
worse than anyone else's. In fact, I brought up a, a screenshot from, from Hamlet because the uh, speech that was given here kind of popped to mind. This is, of course, a, a remake of, of Hamlet. This is, you know, Laertes, and Laertes is the brother of Ophelia, and Ophelia has taken her own life, and Laertes believes that somehow Hamlet's responsible for it. And Hamlet was watching this from afar and in secret and listening to Laertes go on and on and on about, oh, poor little me, my loss is so much greater than everybody else's. My loss is so much greater. And he finally comes out from the hiding and he says, what is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? You see, what really gets me, what really drives me nuts about this idea of this evil Venezuelan who wasn't supposed to be here, or this evil Guatemalan, or as if losing a loved one to a heinous act by an American isn't worthy of a presidential press conference. This guy gets to stand up there with his little T-shirt with his with his lost loved one, you know, on national TV, and everybody all gets to feel sorry for him because his loved one lost their life to to an uh, an illegal person, a person who's who's not legal to be a person, a person apparently who doesn't have any rights. You know, I could have swore I, wrote, I read in the Constitution that that all men were endowed by their Creator with inalienable rights, all men, not all citizens, not all people who passed Washington's, D.C.'s citizenship test, that all men. But those of us who have lost loved ones, and believe me, if anyone gets, when it gets into a contest with people that you've loved, that you've had to put in a box and throw dirt on top of, I'll get in that contest with anybody. I've lost, and I'm not even saying my loss is any worse than anybody else's. But I would never go out on TV and say, the Venezuelan did this. And the, who, I wouldn't care less. I wouldn't care if you lose a loved one. How many of you ever heard this idea of oh, this upstanding member of society who does something bad and because they're an upstanding member of society, they deserve a break. But if it's somebody who's an evil, illegal Venezuelan, you need to throw the book at them. I mean, imagine the idea. There's a there's some woman, and she's she's so tired. She's so tired. She's driving home. She had a long day volunteering at the the local nursing home, and she spends all of her weekends loking, uh, volunteering at the local uh, puppy and kitten shelter too. On top of taking care of all of her kids and being active in her local PTA, and she's just dozing off at the wheel, and she doesn't see the light turn red. And there, this there's this prostitute that walking across the street and she's got a 40 ouncer in her hand and she hits her and you're like well we shouldn't put the woman who killed the other the, the prostitute in jail because she's an upstanding member of society think of all the puppies and kittens that she's helping to foster and all of the elderly that she's helping to and that other woman she was a piece of crap in society she was a prostitute and a drinker and you know she hadn't been out there drinking you're not supposed to really be walking down the road with a beer in your hand anyway so we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, honor that loss, should we? We shouldn't put that on TV, should we? Nobody's loss is any greater than anyone else's. No one's loss is any greater than anyone else's. Can you imagine? How many of you remember the scripture in the Bible? When Jesus looked at, I believe, I believe it was Stephen. Don't quote me to this. But one of his disciples was in a funeral procession for a family member, a loved one. And he said, let the dead bury the dead. Come and follow me. You imagine that these days? Jesus, you didn't realize this person died at the hands of an illegal immigrant into our lands. And You imagine that? It's just cringe. Oh, and man, I tell you what, just wait. Just wait. If, if Trump is smart, and you can say you heard it here first. If Trump is smart, he will find a way to get out of the debates. 
he will find some excuse to get out of the debates because when she brings up E. Jean Carroll, it is over for him. Capital O, capital V, capital E, capital R. I don't care if eggs are $12 a dozen. It's over for him when she brings that up. Those of you who don't know, this was a woman who in her younger years was an incredibly attractive woman, Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, I believe Miss USA, definitely Miss Indiana, absolutely stunningly gorgeous woman. This is a picture of her on the left, 80 years old. This is a picture of Marla Maples at around 60 years old. You would think, gosh, they don't really look alike. How could one be mistaken for the other? This is Donald Trump, Democrat. Donald Trump, Democrat married to his second wife, Marla Maples. They have a daughter, Tiffany Trump. Now, when confronted under oath in a deposition, Mr. Trump said that there's no possible way he could have been guilty of attempting to rape E. Jean Carroll because she's not his type. Now, most women out there just cringe and rightfully so, when they hear that being the excuse for a man not... So you only only rape women of a certain type. You're, you only rape women of a certain type? Is that what you're saying? And I can say this now, factually correct, because he has been found liable for the assault. It's done. It's fact. Now, this is his wife, Marla Maples. This is E. Jean Carroll. And... When he was confronted, there was a picture. See if I can find the picture. Here it is. See this picture right here? When shown this picture in the deposition, Trump thought it was Marla Maples, but it was actually E. Jean Carroll. Now, as if this wasn't strange enough, I covered this before. And some people said, well, I don't see the resemblance. If you don't see the resemblance between the woman on the left and the woman on the right, you're blind. The woman on the left is Ivana Trump, young Ivana Trump, right when they got married, right when they met. And the woman on the right is Stormy Daniels. If, if you can't see this, I'm sorry, but you're just willingly blind at this point. They could be mother, daughter, time travelers, sisters. I, they could seriously, they, you could almost pass them off as twins. It is so spooky. So the porn star that he was allegedly at the golf place with, with Bill Clinton and a whole bunch of other lefty liberals in front of a Wicked Pictures logo, taking pictures that he allegedly didn't sleep with, <clears throat> is a dead ringer. For his first wife, who at one time also accused him of forcing himself on her, along with 25 other women. And you can look that up. That's factually correct, too. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And this isn't going to matter. Why, Florida Monkey, didn't you see that they lied about the job support? Why do you think they released it now? Nobody's going to remember this in November. Nobody is going to remember this in November. And like I said, $12, $12 a dozen eggs isn't going to matter. It isn't going to matter. When it comes right down to it, it's really the OnlyFans argument once again rearing its ugly head. The, the, rich, the rich old perv that's going to buy your groceries for you and make your groceries cheaper? Or her? Or Kamala Harris. See, you can... Uh, and Trump also said the most uh, unbelievable thing about... Uh, he said, and I want to get this right, 15 years ago? He said 15 years ago, San Francisco was a great city. Now it's unlivable. Quote, Donald Trump. 15 years ago was when she was a prosecutor there. And Gavin Newsom was the mayor there. And somebody on Fox News, actually somebody on Fox News that caught it. It's like he just said, Trump just said 15 years ago that 
San Francisco was a great city. 15 years ago, both Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom were city officials. It's just unbelievable to me. So stick a fork in it. Like I said, it's over. It is, it's over and history is going to record this was the time. They're going to look back at how it happened, why it happened, and they're going to say, and it's going to be, it's an energy thing. He blew his emotional wad going after other Republicans, going after DeSantis, going after Nikki Haley, going after all the people that were trying to uh, provide a somewhat more sane option for November. And he blew his emotional wad on that. And then everything that happened in in Pennsylvania, all going to get forgotten. It is all going to get forgotten because it, it's going to come down to morality. And I think it's kind of ironic, ladies, those of you out there who are Trump supporters. I think it's very ironic you have beaten my channel up over the last two years because I've been talking about this whole OnlyFans thing. Well, guess what? You've just got proven right. Florida Maki, if it comes down to morality or money, I'm choosing morality every time. Well, guess what the country's going to do? Guess what the country's going to do? Young women? Young women will say, you know what? Even if things stay more expensive, we'll double up. We'll triple up. We'll quadruple up. But we're not going to vote for this guy. I don't care how much money he's going to save us. I don't care how much better he thinks he's going to do with the stock market or do with prices or whatever. We're not going to vote for this guy. We'd rather be poor. And I mean, forget the whole abortion thing, the whole Roe v. Wade thing. That that alone is probably going to do it. So, just saying, don't kill the messenger. God bless. Thank you guys so much, everyone who's continuing to sign up over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. Those of you who are already there and staying there on a monthly basis, God bless you. Thank you so much. It means more than you know to me. It truly does. One U.S. dollar, guys. And there, and like I said, there are videos we've been doing weekly or maybe even a little bit more often, sometimes less, videos over there for the last, since about 2018. So, I mean, there's hundreds of videos over there that you've never before seen and could not possibly be seen on YouTube because some of the content's a little bit, you know, more racy. So we will leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.